Okay, we're here with the one and only Rod Sarko. First of all, introduce us to your team, just so we know. This is my dad, uh, dad. Rod Sarko, senior, and then my trainer, Andrew Garnick. And you've been, he's been your long-time trainer? Correct, yep. Him and my dad both, but yeah. Um, big fight, man, Francisco Vargas, back in the limelight. Just tell us about this matchup, man. Hi. Uh, you know, we, we've had plenty of time to get ready for it. They, they called us about eight weeks. We had about eight weeks at camp. Um, excited to be getting, you know, at that 130th weight class, you know, uh, where I think we, you know, where we should be. Um, just excited. I mean, Vargas is a great champion. You know, back to back fight of the year. Uh, he comes, he's a warrior, he's tough. You know what I mean? He's quick, he, he knows how to box in there. Does a lot of really good little things in the ring um, that he probably doesn't get credit for. Um, it, you know, that's why he was a champion for, for as long as he was. So we're looking forward to beating him and then hopefully, you know, getting a world title shot uh, after. You sound very confident, of course, as you should be as a fighter. Your, your mentality should always be that you're going to win. This fight, you know, the perception is, oh, he's fighting about Sokka. It's going to be easy fight for him. I actually feel the other way, that it's going to be a very tough fight for him. A very uh, good opportunity for you to, to come back with a big win and... and position yourself where you should be as a fighter. How do you feel about that and the perception of you being an easy fight for him? How do you take that as a fighter? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I mean, you know, you know, people kind of put a lot of stock into the Danny Garcia fight, I guess. And That's we, really and where it got, all comes from. And you get two different classes of, of fighters in the sport to begin with. You got your Francisco Vargas's, who were brought up on the A-side. And I don't want to say spoon-fed, because he fought a lot of guys, but they have an A-side path to success. Uh, when you have guys like me, I have a B-side path to success. So it's a little, t it's a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, you got to go work a job. You know what I mean? You're, you're. I have two kids. I'm, I'm working. So it's not 100% boxing all the time. Mm -hmm. So once you get to that level where you can afford these sh uh, strength and conditioning coaches and, and and all that other stuff, and you're 100% yeah. focused, not only are you going up against a guy that's obviously a top talent and a really good fighter. But you're going up against a guy that has all of the other things in place. And yeah. it makes it a lot tougher for B-side guys to come up and get through. So I think it's really important that the sport gives people like that more upper, more opportunities. Uh, because there are a lot of guys that can fight. I mean, like myself, you know, I believe I, I, I can fight. I, obviously, I'm not um, 365 a year like Vargas. But I like I said, I had eight weeks for this fight. I fought a lot of tough guys, too, that people probably don't realize. I mean, I fought... Um, Ricardo Alvarez, obviously, he's not like a huge name, but it's a Canelo's brother. I fought him on Showtime and, yeah. and got robbed pretty bad. And that was it. That weight was supposed to be at 138. He came in at 42, walked in the ring 55. So he was a much bigger guy. I beat that Alexei Colado, who was a top prospect on Showtime, down a lower weight, even even had him down and hurt a couple times in that fight. And then as soon as I, after I lost to Garcia, I came right back and fought the number 15 WBC guy. Mm -hmm. uh, kid was like 36 and 3 Monty Clay from Pittsburgh I came back and beat him unanimous decision so I think that's a paperwork for you after you gotta, after gotta, after, gotta, after, we'll, after no, no. okay I'll let you finish that thought man as you were saying uh what was I what was I uh, you had beat the WBC right? right yeah so so I was you know I, I beat a lot of guys at the around 130 135 that were top 15 guys Alvarez Colotto and Clay were all ranked in the top 15 um they did put me in the rankings but the rankings man are you know how that goes like I'm a B-side guy, so it doesn't matter yeah. how many top 15 guys I beat. They're not going to keep me in the rankings very long. Yeah. Because they're going to put another one of the top, one of these top-ranked Golden Boy Al Heyman guys. They're just yeah. going to put them in there because they spend the money with the commissions. I just wish boxing fans could see that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and think, well, even even BoxRec does it, man. And and I give credit where credit's due. That Ryan Garcia is a tough, tough kid coming up. You know, 14 and 13 knockouts, he can fight. You know, probably be a world champion one day. But right now... He's ranked above you. He's ranked way above me. You, you even on agree, boxer. You don't agree with that? Uh, who has he fought? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, who has he beat? I beat top two, three top 15 guys. Uh -huh. Four top 15 guys, really. And, I mean, I you know, it's all... It is the way it is. And, and I'm not concerned with it, man. Like, I, I just come, I'm going to fight. Hopefully, you know, I can beat Francisco Vargas. I think I got the right... Uh, style and the right game plan he's he's gonna come bring pressure which is you know and we box and we move and you know i'm gonna be a big you know he's not gonna be the bigger guy at 130 yeah so he's not just gonna come run you know through me run so through you yeah yeah so it's uh, nah, uh we'll, we'll see what happens in the fight you know of course not looking past the fight man but maybe you could settle the score with 
Ryan Garcia if you don't feel he should be ranked above you? I don't care about Ryan Garcia. That kid, that kid got his own path. I got my own path. That was just a, just a point. It, it's no fault of his. Yeah. It's no fault of that kid. I mean, he's a hell of a fighter. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's. It's not his fault. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just the way the sport is. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think of him as a fighter? Stylistically, how far can he go? Is a lot of people I like him, man. compared him to Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, yeah, he is like a little mini Oscar kind of. He's <laughs> fat. He's fast. <laughs> He, he is fast. He's faster than, than Oscar, right? He's got, yeah, but he's not as fluid yet. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he's as polished. I don't know how rough, tough the kid is yet. Mm -hmm. Oscar is a tough, tough kid. Do you know what I mean? You're gonna, you can't um, replace an Olympic gold medal with some junior titles. Uh -huh. So, um, we'll step up his competition. They're going to put him in the right fights. And he'll probably, as long as he does what he's supposed to do and grows, you know, the way he's supposed to grow, it'll probably be pretty tough. How, how did you... How far have you come as a fighter since the Danny Garcia fight? Obviously, you want to prove today that you're not just that. You were the guy who fought Danny Garcia. Right. How far have you come since that fight, you know, that fight itself? Man, like I said, I'm a B-side guy, so I work a job. I train. You know, we train. We get fights. We train hard. We, we, we fight wherever we can fight to stay active. But, but um, I haven't lost since then, right? I mean, really, the only fight I ever really lost was the Danny Garcia fight, in my opinion. Like, the other fights, I don't really feel like I lost those. Yeah. They were in the hometown guys, you know, area. and It'll be like this tomorrow, you know what I mean? If I come out I come out and dominate this fight tomorrow, am I really going to get a decision? Yeah. You know what I mean, out here? So. Um, reflecting back on that fight, not to dwell on it, obviously, you've, you're past that, but going into that fight, what was your mentality and, and the way things turned out? Did you ever expect that to happen and, and I didn't expect I expected to go to the distance yeah maybe win a few rounds like if I if, if he got crazy trying to get a knockout maybe I could you know be real competitive and get a decision but uh, he's so much bigger you know we fought at 130 right be we fought at 130 right before that yeah so like I fought Colorado won pretty much 30 31 31 ish mm -hmm. like in April mm -hmm. so I didn't have a lot of time to really be I was walking around at 142 then yeah you know so it's a big difference yeah. Plus one. How did how did you see things from your end? The the, the, the the overall just how things ended with Danny Garcia and going to the fight, just reflecting back mentally. How, how were you guys? No, I, 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 I don't dare want the past. Yeah, where we are uh, working on this fight for tomorrow and the more smarter winner. Yeah. Dad, how did how do you feel about how did you feel about it at the time watching your son? Yeah. I, I knew that was going to be tough for him, but you know when they offer you that kind of money, you're a fighter. You're not going to turn that down. Yeah. So you know you got to give him credit. He got in the ring with a world champion. It was two weight classes above him. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of the the haters don't see that yeah. that the the integrity he has for the sport that he didn't turn it down. He took the money. He went. He fought. It didn't turn out the way he wanted it. It didn't turn out the way any of us wanted it. I don't even think even the promoter wanted that to happen. But that's how Danny Garcia yeah. fights So He has that sneaky punch. He catches you. He caught Amir Khan with that same that same punch. And Morales. And knocked him out. Brandon now, Rios. Rod went down to one knee. He didn't knock him out with that punch. It took him three more times. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's true. So at, if you are a true boxing fan and you want to look past, you know, the hate part of it because it seems like there's a lot of that out there i mean these guys are tough getting the ring i mean how many people would get in the ring and intentionally get into a fight like that yeah. so i think it i think it shows that the metal he has how did how did you feel at the moment when you saw him just give give i hate to say that word but give flattened out he, oh, he got I, put out how I, did you feel like I, as his father just how it, did it, you? it hurt it hurt yeah it hurt. were you concerned or did you know he was okay and i i knew that he was okay now I was in the first row. I wasn't in the corner, but yeah. I, I saw that he was still trying to get up. That's the fighting. Uh -huh. you know? So people got people should understand that he got knocked down. First two, he took a knee. Uh, it's smart. And he still I, wanted I to get. I could have got up. To he's be still, honest, if they wouldn't have stopped it there, I'd have probably got didn't up. Let him yeah. I was being I was being stupid in that round because I was agitated at the knockout. I got like ahead of myself. Like the first round. We were feeling each other out, you know, and it was a pretty good round. The first round was a yeah. I didn't feel like his power was anything substantial, but mm -hmm. I, I remember the Amir Khan fight, the Morales fight. Like he, he, he's able to hit you with shots you don't see. He hit me with a few shots in the first round, and it didn't feel anything. So I started to feel like I could counter, 
You know what I mean? I gotta be smart about a back counter. And that's yeah. honestly his probably biggest quality is sucking you in mm -hmm. and he's able to land those big shots. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of got caught up in the moment, you know is what it, I mean, that, in that fight. But it, it is what it is, man. It's not like, I mean, it's not like the same thing doesn't happen to other people. I mean, Lamont Peterson's been knocked out early. Lots of guys have been knocked out early. Bernard Hopkins was knocked out. Like, like, uh, uh, what's his name? Just fought Charlo, got knocked out the first round. That kid, um, the kid's not a Williams, bomb. Williams, Williams, Lubin, Lubin, Lubin. Oh, Lubin, Lubin. Yeah, he could, Lubin. the kid could fight, but I mean, he got knocked out the first round. So is he a bum now? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it doesn't to, to judge someone off of one fight. Not only yeah. one fight. You figure 130, 135, 140, 140 welterweight. It wasn't at the limit, but it was mm -hmm. a welterweight fight. That's a big difference. You know what yeah. I mean? Especially coming off a fight that was at one thirty. So it, it is what it is. If I had to do it again, I'd take the fight again. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, Brandon Rio, did you get a chance to see that fight? Yeah, in, I thought he did he... well, man. I thought he did well. You know, that he, he was the smaller guy coming up, and he doesn't have... Brandon's not the guy that's going to counter and, and move in and out. So I felt like style was it was probably a better fight for Danny. Mm -hmm. And Brandon still managed to, to get to him a little bit and make it a little bit tougher of a fight. Yeah. So I thought he did well. I thought he did really well. Did, did Danny show maybe glimpses of improvement there since you guys as far as you said there's that, that one white hook the, the sneaky hooks that you don't see but yeah. in that fight he really set it up he saw he Brandon did. didn't bring the he did the, the, after a jab he got lazy came back it was picture perfect technique right. Danny's a hard guy to back up too like he yeah. he punches through your shots do you know what I mean like he, he doesn't he doesn't like go on to, like like back up when you come he'll like he'll stay there and, and fire off of you you know what I mean yeah. which takes a lot of it takes a lot of courage to just stay there and, and, and yeah. roll and counter with shots. So. And, I thought you'd be angry with your applications. I got hell up there for not being on time. You're the manager? Yeah. Um, just your thoughts being in the corner with Rod during his fight with Danny and, and, and if you saw the Reels fight, which knockout to you seemed more devastating or more, it was more profound? From your opinion, how, how did how did you Garcia see? It was a lot bigger guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Rod. I think Rod uh, tried to tried to prove something to fight him toe to toe. Uh -huh. um, his game really is is uh, classic boxing, sticking mm -hmm. and moving. Yeah. Um, thought maybe he fought angry and gave Danny uh, an opportunity that I don't know if Danny would have got if uh, Rod would have fought um, this fight. It's probably a little smarter. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying uh, necessarily that he's better than Danny, mm -hmm. but I think I think Rod definitely has the capability to take a fight deep in any round and deepen the rounds with anybody. Yeah. So he learned from that experience, and he's going to come uh, tomorrow night and fight his fight. Yeah. And that 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 was the learning experience, and uh, hopefully he can learn from that and uh, convert tomorrow and move on to a world title fight. Dad, how did you see the knockouts? Comparing them, um, the Brandon Rios knockout with your son, Ratsaka's knockout, uh, which one was more profound, more well, devastating, or more? I mean, it was my son involved, so naturally that one had more of an effect on me. I mean, because it was personally, mm -hmm. you know, I took it personally. Someone you care, someone you know, yeah, you love. And I took a lot of the repercussions. What round did Rios, what round did Rios get stopped? I think it was seven, no? Or nine? Maybe seven or nine. Seven or nine. One nine. I mean, a knockout's a knockout. Yeah, yeah. Anytime it's somebody to, gets to knocked out, you know, it's, it's, tough, it's tough for the guy that gets yeah. knocked out. Yeah, I think I think you got I think you got to ask after, like, I, in the locker room after the fight, I was fine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't have any headache. Uh, if you think about it, I didn't take. I'd say Rios is worse, mm -hmm. and not because of the shot that did it, because he took nine rounds of punishment up until that stoppage. On top of the knockout. Right, like yeah. I didn't really get hit with too many punches. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, it, I didn't, didn't, I mean, I fought three months later in a 10 round fight. Yeah. It, you know, back down at 135. So I, it, it didn't, I, I can't speak if it affected him, yeah. how he feels after the fight. But I can tell you for me, regardless of how it looked, like it, yeah. it wasn't really, uh, you know, I was out for a couple seconds. Like I, I was out to the ground and I was on the ground. I opened my eyes, I think, to be honest, he would have been at like four or five. I probably would have beat that count. My legs were fine. Yeah. When I got up, I was just annoyed more than, um, than anything. I think it's, it's, it's relative to you, Rod, too, because um, comparing, like, those were, those, were, those were some real impactful knockouts. Um, and then you have knockouts like Saul Canelo Alvarez versus Amir Khan. You mentioned you right. fought one, yeah. of, one of Canelo's brother. If 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 there if if you're con you're in that situation, man, you've been in that situation with Danny Garcia, and now all this situ this situation with Canelo, man, comes up. 
It could have possibly been facing a dirty fighter that night of. You saw the results, man. What do you mean? Like, 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 like with Canelo? Like Canelo Khan, in that sense. Had Danny came up with something, he hasn't, but I'm saying, like, how would you feel mentally if you're Khan? You ended up in that situation with him. He came up dirty, and then he came up. I mean, I'd be mad. People come up. I mean, Vargas has come up dirty before. Yeah. I, he. I think Vargas came up for the same it was thing. The same Canelo. Exact thing, yeah. yeah. Same thing. Canelo. And did he? Did he? I don't know, man. Like, like uh, whether they're taking illegal stuff or not, I don't know. I've never in my life, on my, you know, I, I'm clean, but. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's different things to worry about when you got A side guys with money behind them. Mm -hmm. uh, like they get strength, like Victor Conti is a really good strength and conditioning coach. Mm -hmm. He's got all the best supplements. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you're always on all these supplements all the time. Where like you know I'm at home with my kids. I'm, I'm eating healthy and stuff. Yeah. But it's a it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game. I would have loved to have been able to come up on on the A side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where I had money backing me too. Not that I would ever do anything illegal. Yeah. But even even just having that. Uh, the uh, supplements or, or, or the strategy and that game plan up is a big advantage. Just to see how yeah. much greater it benefits you or, or whatnot. Right, I mean, all those guys are with those guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Memo and uh, Victor. Yeah. So, and hey, whatever. It, that's not my thing to talk about. I'm just here to, I know we had nine weeks in camp and I know I didn't miss a day. Uh -huh. And I know I was working out two, three times a day. So, uh, 10 rounds isn't gonna be a problem for me as it hasn't been in the past. I can come throw 100 punches around for 10 rounds. I'm gonna be a real 130 pound guy. Um, my mouth is so dry right now, it's like hard to talk. Yeah. Can, can I get a couple, a glass of water with something to spit in it? Yeah. Could we get weighed in? Um, my mouth is dry right now. Yeah. So what, what do you want to see from Rod in this fight, you? What, what would you thing. like to see? I always say you let him deal with Rod. Rod got the footwork, put that together with the punches, and it's gonna go fine. Yeah. Um, we fought a fighter back here when uh, uh, Mike Tyson, Sean O'Reilly said he has footwork, something like uh, really Pep, who was a 126 pound champion years back. I met him in person, 65. Rod has got better footwork than him, although that guy was a football champion. Rod's got some good moves yeah. and uh, good balance and tip top shape. And that's what we got to go with. Yeah. And his condition is right. And that's, you know, what his conditioning is. The way you train, the hours you sleep, the food you eat, the friends you keep. And I like that. Right. And that's how he does it. And we have our own camp. Yeah. We got a five bedroom camp. He's there. Glad I appreciate the time. I'm going to let you get back to your paperwork. Uh, appreciate thank it, you, man. guys, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're a nice guy.